Ali, what are you eating? Uh, it's called cow foot soup. I'm not sure what's in here. You should yeah. try one of those little hot orange peppers right there. Huh? Mm. Are you trying to trick me? Uh, uh, I no. bet you that's habanero. I will warn you. It's if it's habanero, habanero, it's insanely hot. There you go. Oh, he put the whole thing in there. Oh my god. You said you're hot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So we're at Altoon Ha today in Belize. And Altoon Ha in Maya means Rockstone Pond. And it's, it's called that because at this site, the Maya built a, a very large reservoir. They diverted streams, they collected water and rainwater for a city of over 10,000 people. This site was inhabited from the classic period through the 14th century. And there were a lot of earthworks and a lot of monuments created here. It was also an important center for trade, and they traded their goods all the way down through the coast of Panama. I'm at the base of the Temple of the Sun, and this is a very unique temple because it's got an oval-shaped base, which is unusual in the Maya world. It also contains a great example of Maya corbel arching, which you can see right here behind me. And the temple itself is only 60 feet high. It's really easy to climb. This temple to the sun god here is the tallest structure at Altoon Ha. Uh, this rope is here for uh, tour groups and to keep them off, but we can climb to the top of it. The sun god is represented as this man who wears this hat. And uh, this is uh, the iconic symbol for Altoon Ha. All right, so I've climbed to the top and I expected to have this grand vista, you know, and see the ocean, but we're 100 feet tall here and you can still see that we can just barely see over the canopy of this jungle. So here we are at the top of the Sun Temple and when archaeologists excavated this here, they found a tomb. Inside this tomb was one of the largest jade carvings in the Maya world. It's the figure of, a, of a, just a head, a large head made out of jade. It weighs 10 pounds. And uh, this head is said to represent the sun god. Like here they yeah. found a big jade head, right? Correct. Yeah, a big jade uh, head. The size of a human. Where is it? The jade head was actually in uh, University of Canada, Ontario. Canada oh, yeah. came into the country and did excavation here. No, we as Belizeans, we don't believe that they brought the right jade head, right? Yeah. But they have a jade head at the Museum of Belize that they say that's the one that they found here. Now, when you're at these Maya sites, you know, it's it can be a little precarious. They don't have ropes and handrails, so you need to be careful. Because uh, when you're standing on a precipice like this, you know, that, that fall would not feel good. So one thing about some of these these sites is uh, when you come to them, you know you, the way you see it, it maybe is not the way that it was found, and and and, and in some of these places they're partially reconstructed, like this series of steps here. There's plaster here. I can see people's footprints in it, you know. So this has been reconstructed, so it shows, so the tourists get to see like what it might have looked like, you know. But the great thing about sites like these is you also have these mounds over here, and uh, they're definitely not reconstructed, maybe partially excavated, but they still left something for your imagination. So I was just walking around here and you know, there's stone on the ground, right? Well, this stone right here, it's a hand ax. When you find artifacts like this and you see them, put them right back where you found them and walk away.
I'm standing in front of the Temple of the Green Tomb, and it's named as such because inside the pyramid is the tomb of an important person. And archaeologists actually found a cache of over 300 jade objects. And they found a group of smashed codices, which are Mayan books that are made of bark and folded up accordion style. And inside the books are usually written in hieroglyphics the history of the community, uh, religious practices, or information about the person who's entombed there. All right, so here we are at the at the rock stone pond that Al Tun Ha is is, uh, is named for, and uh, they had to construct this large structure and and then to uh, to fill up the water, and so this was their fresh water supply, and they diverted streams, and uh, this was the water for 10,000 people. Now today, I don't think I'll be drinking this water or swimming in it. Maybe it's just a bad time of year. So it's in a museum somewhere. Yeah, it's in a uh, British museum. So one thing to note about Altoon Ha is that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, cruise ships dock in Belize City, and they send these large tour groups up in large buses. And so that that would be a day you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do that. We're here on a Sunday, and uh, for half the day we had no one here, and there's just a couple little independent groups. When you come to sites like this, make sure to bring your own food and water because sometimes you're not sure if they're actually gonna have any that day at the site. And also, bring a little bit of money with you, the local currency, and try to buy some handicrafts from the local vendors because you're supporting their community and you can buy some really great stuff. This is what we do for a living right here. It could be more, but we be reasonable with the people. Cool. Oh, five US? Yeah, 10 US. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. The water is so pretty. In order to get to Shunan Tunich, you have to cross the river. And there's a ferry that takes you there and it's actually hand cranked. And it can fit two to three vehicles and a bunch of people. It only takes a minute to get over. Did you see that huge iguana? Yeah. Can you see him from the front? 
No, I tried walking over there to see if I could. I couldn't figure out which branch he was on. And the camera was sitting. It's still going. I haven't turned it off. Okay. Look at me like that. <laughs> and tunage you first take the ferry then you drive up a road about a mile then you hit the ticket entrance area and then you actually have to hike up a hill okay. and it's on top of a limestone ridge and it's really cool because way down by the river you can see the pyramids it's pretty awesome so let's go ahead and head up yes. there we go area so we're probably so here we're here oh yeah there's three big things we saw right oh, there that's what we walked so past. it's oriented like this Shunantunans translates to supernatural mountain in the ancient language, but it's also known as the Stone Lady because there's a, a ghostly woman in white that appears and she has fire red glowing eyes. This woman climbs up these stairs and disappears into the stone walls. Oh man, I think I just caught the lady. There she is. She's wearing a tank top. Whoa, it's crazy. Shunintunich was a medium-sized city housing about 10,000 people. And the reason why they built the city here is that it's elevated above this very fertile river floodplain. And with all that kind of soil lying on the low-lying areas, you could support a lot of people and grow a lot of food. It was a thriving market economy. Shunan Tunich was inhabited between 400 AD and about 1000 AD. During that time, there was a massive earthquake and people actually left the city because it was partly demolished. Eventually, they made their way back, repaired the city, and still lived here for hundreds of years. Early in the 1900s, though, there were some excavations done on the site, which produced a lot of information about the history. But those records were lost, and some of the artifacts were lost as well, whether they were sold or what, we don't know. And that's the tragedy because we lost a lot of the information about what was going on here and what the people were doing. Kind of monkey, the holler monkey. Oh, the holler monkey. trying to do it gorilla style you know and gorilla style means you get what you get and so uh, today we got some gorillas or monkeys <laughs> <laughs> saying, you know we're not we're not getting behind the camera and we're on video and saying hi mom this is Belize right, right. <laughs> yeah 
totally epic. Sun blazing down, lens flare, the whole world. What always wanted to show you. Display it to me. Yeah, the rest I had. Can you focus on How much are the rest of us? 20 bellies. How do I look with this? Uh, you're kind of silly. Cool, can I see? <laughs> How good is it? Alright, so what do you have there? This Stop. is gib nut. It's a local animal. It's rodent type pig thing about this big, uh, that tall, with no tail and a rounded nose. And this is a local wine, soursop. Yay, um, alright. How does it taste? Man. Have you had it? It's delicious. <laughs> delicious. Um, I'm having the cow foot soup. Um, it's definitely footy. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I, oh, there's a knuckle in here, so that would be the the, the knuckle, and it's got some vegetables and some stringy bits, and it doesn't really look like any kind of gutty meat. More of a uh, more of a cartilagey, fatty kind of thing. Kelly Joe, what are you? I think it's called a scarbe. It's an onion soup with chicken and uh, lots of jalapeno. Whoa! I'm oh, having man. a taste of home. <laughs> I'm having a cheeseburger, fries, Coca-Cola. <laughs> bon appetit. favorite thing about Belize is the radio stations. Because in Mexico it's all accordion. It's like polka music. Belize is what it sounds like. In a nutshell. 